Hey everyone, Mark from Coastal Country. Today's video, I'm just gonna quickly show you how to scale, gut, and clean a King George whiting. Um, pretty common catch down here in the southeast off jetties and that, a lot of kids catch them. And if you're not sure how to um, prepare them, if you wanna eat one, um, hopefully this will give you a few tips. Okay, so we've got our legal size King George whiting here in South Australia. They've gotta be 32. And you can see this one, they're measured from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. So if you pin him down there, you can see that one's 35 and a half. So that's well and truly legal. So a nice little fresh fish. And I'll just quickly show you how to scale that and gut it. So you can do that in multiple ways. I've got this little fish scaler here, picked up cheap. I think it was from Kmart, it's like six bucks. Um, you can use that. You can use the back of a knife, something fairly blunt to scale it, like that as well. Um, but pretty much anything. So what you do is just go against the grain of the scale. So it's smooth this way, rough that way. They're super slimy King George whiting to scale. So what you do is just keep going backwards. Do this with most fish actually. And we're gonna do crispy skin whiting. So that's why I'm gonna leave the skin on this. Normally um, I actually skin the whiting so I don't even bother scaling or gutting them. I just knock the sides off them and skin them. But uh, we're gonna do some pan fried up um, with skin on. So you get right up into the fins there. It doesn't matter too much in this area because we're going to trim it across here anyway. So pretty slippery suckers. If you're out in the boat, you can get a scaler bag which you drag behind the boat and that knocks all the scales off and the slime and everything. It makes life a lot easier. But if you're um, on a jetty or something, or you're staying at a caravan park or something, and you catch one and you want to prepare it, hopefully this will help you out. So I'll just blast a bit of this off. Okay, so once we've got a, all our scales off, next thing to do is gut it. So just a little sharp knife, put a little incision basically in its bum, and then cut all the way down through the two little fins on the sides there. Careful not to cut yourself. Cut through right up to the gills, which is right up to there in its head. And then what we do is we'll cut through the little sections like that open they pull these out sideways and you can see his gills up inside his head there a bit tricky to see they're the they're the gills those little red things so you want to cut them out as well so careful not to cut your finger so we just nick the top of the gills like that and then we grab the gills sort of basically tear them out best you can and pull all the stomach out down like that all the way down to there and that should come out. So pretty gross, you can give it a blast with water or a bucket. Keeps it a bit cleaner. So what you could do um, is you could put this in the fridge now and that, and that will firm up because at the moment it's pretty floppy. So if you put these in the fridge they firm up and go stiff and then that heaps easier to fill it later. So the main thing is just make sure you get all the gills out out of its head because they are the first things that go off and you can actually cut through here a bit if you wanted to clean a bit more of this up down to its backbone get all of that out and then give it a really good blast off you can scratch this out as well it's like a I'm not sure what that is whether it's like a liver or something So basically you just pull out everything that shouldn't be there. So once that's done, you can see it's all nice and clean inside there. And that will sit in the fridge for a couple of days, no worries at all. Or let it firm up overnight or a few hours and then you can start filleting it. Right, so once we've got our fish that's been scaled and gutted, um, I'm not going to worry about putting this in the fridge to firm up. I'm just going to fillet it now. Give you a bit of an idea. You can use multiple knives. You can just make sure that they're nice and sharp. 
Um, I'll just use this one to start with generally. Or you can use a flexi knife like that. It's got a bit of a bend in it. Good for skinning fish as well. So either way, start with a nice sharp knife. Just cut down, down the edge of its top spines there, all the way down its tail. And you just keep following its spine all the way along, keeping the nice, nice flat against the spine there and follow the bones as you go down. Keeping the knife nice and flat. All the way down there. And then you can actually pop it out the side, follow it nice and flat all the way down on its spine, out to its tail like that. What I'll do now is pin bones all the way through this way. I actually just cut cut through those pins. It's so much easier when they're firmed up in the fridge a bit. So we're just cutting through the little pin bones now all the way to its head. Hang on to the head because it's pretty tough and you shouldn't be able to cut yourself if you do that. Take the knife out. So what we've done now, cut it all the way down through those pin bones. And then we get the knife under its bottom fin. So here, cut through there, angle back towards its head and it's a fillet off like that. So you can see there, hardly any wastage at all. Let's give this a quick clean up again. So the next thing to do is remove these rib, rib cage bones. So there's bones this way all the way along. So you want to get those out. So again, nice sharp knife. Just do this nice and slow so you can see what's happening. And then we just carve underneath those ribs like that. See them just shaving underneath. You can see the knife under there. And you can get to that point, you can actually just pull them out. Like that. So in there is a, there's a rib, rib bones all in there, so that's all waste. Chuck that away. So when you go to the markers, um, fresh fish market or something, when you buy your King George Whiting, that's pretty much what you'll see. Skin on, um, and the pin bones are in there as well. So you can actually cook that up like that, that's fine, but you will get these little tiny bones that run this way all the way through. And they can be a bit of a pain if you've got little kids and that. So they pretty much finish, they get pretty small to that point there. So they're large there. So you can actually get tweezers and pull them out individually or a pair of long nose pliers. Um, I found it's just easier to cut a little V out, cut each side of those bones like that, all the way down. Grab that little strip of meat, pull it back like that. Cut that off there, and in there there's little bones, and that's it, that's pin bones gone. So that there, now, is 100% boneless fillet, ready to be cooked. And we're gonna do a few of these up for a crispy skin. Get them on a nice hot pan and whack them on with some corn flour, beautiful. Alrighty, so we're gonna cook up some of Mark's beautiful white I'm gonna do crispy skinned pan fried. Uh, I've already got the oil heating up. If you want to make it extra tasty, just add a little bit of butter. You have to be careful though that you don't burn it. So that should be perfect. All we're going to do is use a little bit of corn flour that's been really well seasoned with some salt and some pepper. And the whiting, I've actually just left it open in the fridge uh, for the last hour or so so that the skin is nice and dry and you'll get a better crispier finish. Skin side down. One more piece. And for really crispy skin, you push your fish down against the pan and it helps it to crisp up. And if you're not happy with how crispy it is, pop it on for a little bit longer. Yum, beautiful crispy skinned whiting. Delicious. Squeeze a lemon. Job done.